It's time now for the last of our features on the history of British forces in Cyprus. After the upheavals of the 1970s, the 1980s might be considered a quiet time, although British forces still had to contend with refugees from a crisis hit Beirut and an Armenian and Irish Republican terror threat. But the island continued to be vital to the strategic interests of the UK. Tim Cooper evaluates the changing relationship between British forces and Cyprus from the 70s onwards. This video was shown to troops deploying to Cyprus in the late 80s. All the facilities you expect from a top resort. But whatever your choice, it means one thing, water sports. By then, the heat had gone out of the Cold War and tension between the Cypriot communities was on the back burner. Consequently, the emphasis in this film, at least, was on the positives of deploying to the eastern Mediterranean. But just as the Russian bear was losing its teeth and the strategic importance of Cyprus looked as if it could be sidelined, world events changed. 1991, Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. As the world prepared for what will become the first Gulf War, Cyprus stepped up. The runways of RAF Akrotiri providing huge support to the war effort. Refueling tankers kept the Allied fighters in the air and the whole British garrison supported the operation. Cyprus had proved its worth as a UK operations centre and since 1991 it's continued to do so. The 1990s film showed two personnel deploying to Cyprus had a very different tone to the one from the 80s. The ability to train and deploy from here was heavily emphasised as well as the well-resourced military nature of the sovereign base areas. But despite world events, the internal problems of the island wouldn't go away. British troops continued a vigilant watch on the buffer zone between the Greeks and the Turks, here seen patrolling the eastern sovereign base area's border with the disputed territory back in 1996. And the UN peacekeeping mission looks like to be continuing well into the future as well, unless the two sides can reach an agreement. The UN will continue to be in Cyprus as long as the two sides want to talk about the reunification of the island and as long as there's a buffer zone. The military, police and civil affairs within Anfasip will have to continue to manage the buffer zone so that there's a stable platform on which the peace process can be conducted. The island's proximity to the Middle East again showed the strategic importance of the sovereign bases. The Second Gulf War and crucially the ongoing Afghan operations have kept RAF Akrotiri and both garrisons working at a high tempo. Not to forget Libya, where refueling tankers once again aided Allied air assets. In 1878, the British first took control of Cyprus. They wanted a base close to the Middle East, just over there, to try and influence what was going on in that region. 130 odd years of history has shown time and time again that was a good call and having a base on Cyprus really has helped the British achieve their strategic objectives through history.